My name is Henry Caceres. Thanks for attending. I work for Group EAD. And um, we are happy to participate uh, in this event with kind of an important for aeronautical information right now, which is the digital AIM products. And we're actually going to propose also one of the routes or an alternative for a route for implementation of this digital AIM product. I don't know how many of you, or hopefully all of you, are familiar with aeronautical information products, this, the, the conventional products that we have, yeah? You might be, for instance, um, aware of uh, AIP, Aeronautical Information Publication, which is a book, right? Also the, the notams. that's okay, right? Let's uh, start with a little game, and I would like you to support me with this, yeah? And let's go for the first uh, question of a trivia game, yeah? Let's see. Guess how many pages do you think that we have in an AIP, in average? I mean, I'm not talking about a specific uh, AIP of, uh, of a special country, right? A specific country. But uh, those who are working, yeah? Above 250 pages. 200 pages, that's a good estimation. Yes. Thank you, thank you. And anyone else? The, eh? 800, oh my God, 800. Wow, that, that can be too much, yeah? Big time, yeah, you, 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 go, you go high, I, I see you, I see you. 2,000, in average, I'm not talking for a specific country, but in average, a full AAP composed of the three sections, it's more than 2,000 pages. Crazy, so you were actually a little bit low, right? And you were very conservative, but 2,000. This is, in average, I mean, we have uh, considered all the different AAPs all over the world. You need to know that there are big countries out there, right? So. 2,000 pages. Let's go for the next one. How many pages do you think that we could have of no terms in a PIB per hour of flight? Are you familiar with PIBs, right? Pre-flight information bulletin. How many pages of no term? Anyone? Just 72, okay. <laughs> that was too high, but all right. It could be 20. Per hour of flight, it's crazy, right? And uh, let's go for the last question, because I think it's uh, interesting for me, and I think that for most of you, uh, to realize that the pilots, when they are about to depart and, and take a flight, they actually have a specific time for, free, for briefing themselves about these 2,000 pages and 20 pages of note per hour of flight. And this is kind of easy, because maybe a few might be familiar with uh, the time that the pilots have for briefing. How much time do you think they have? 30 minutes. You really need to read quick. Yeah, if you really want to go through these uh, more than 2,000 pages, and uh, depending on how much a flight takes to read 20 pages or no terms. Honestly, this is impossible, right? We have a problem here, and we have identified this problem, and somehow we, we are addressing this uh, um, um, in cooperation with all the um, states and also led by ICAO, and this is why we're going in the transition from AIS to AIM, which is nothing else than di the digitalization of the aeronautical information services. So I wanted to start with this, just to set the background and understand uh, uh, what we are having. We're moving from conventional products into digital products. And I would like to uh, go through some examples of what is what we are going to have in the, in the near future and how we compare this with actually the, the, the conventional old products and beloved old products, right? Um, very related with this, especially those living in Europe, we have the European requirements, the European Union requirements, yeah? You, you will see why this is important, right? Especially this regulation 116 of 2021, so-called CP1, Common Pilot 1. I will give you here some hints of uh, on, on how this is related with aeronautical information, right? And especially these uh, new digital products. And finally, I would like to propose a route for implementation. So let's go quickly through this, yeah? Let's um, start with uh, comparing more or less what are the conventional versus the digital, right? Conventional is the common uh, AIPs and no terms that we have right now. Let me just set up also the background of how, what it's, what's going on right now with aeronautical information. For those of you who work in aeronautical information unit, you know that actually the information is originated here, yeah? This is where we have uh, all the fun going on. 
And then the information is passed by the, to the AIS providers who, in the best of the scenarios, using an, a, a, a database, they are creating the conventional products. Yeah? That is the first step of this information flow. And um, the last step is actually that we produce a copy of these conventional products and we send this copy to the users. Yeah? So this is how it works. Things are changing because back in 2018, ICAO said, all right, let's digitalize a little bit. And then ICAO said, now you have a database and now you can provide also digital data. Yeah? And then what's the user going to do with this digital data? Because the user is actually very familiar with the conventional AIP in no terms, right? And that is the whole thing with this digitalization, that we are empowering the user to use the data for whatever purpose they, they, they want. So we're empowering the, the data, the users, to transform this data into whatever they need, right? For instance, uh, we, we like to say this, um, in a conventional way, we have a chart, printed chart, right? But uh, if you take that chart, and you can do this test, you give it to, to a young boy, and they will start doing this gesture. And they cannot really zoom in, zoom out in a paper, right? Because we need something digital. This is something that we will be able to have with the digital data sets. Things are also changing because um, we are planning to digitalize also the data provision from the originators. So the data comes directly or, or it's originated uh, also in the digital format. And who knows? Yeah, maybe in the near, in the near future, this communication will disappear because we will have a truly digitalized uh, uh, data chain. And um, yeah, unfortunately, yeah, some people are, say, are, are believing that uh, our conventional products, we're not talking tomorrow, we're not talking in five years or 20 years maybe, but our conventional products will cease to exist and will actually will, will have what we call a fully data chain. Yeah. That, so this is what's, why it's important that we move into the digital. So, Let's uh, make a comparison, quick comparison about this, uh, AIP versus uh, eAIP. And look at what, what I have here. It's not a digital AIM product, but it's close. Unfortunately, we can't really consider the eAIP or the electronic AIP as a digital product. Why? Because it's actually almost the same thing. I'm just transforming my documents in AIP into a HTML version or PDF version but of the same thing, yeah? I'm trying to give a little bit of uh, more options for users so they can have a computer, so they can have a laptop, or they can have a tablet, and they can visualize the AIP, but in the end, it's exactly the same thing. What is indeed a, a, a digital product is the AIP versus the digital data sets. So we are transforming the uh, current uh, sections of the aeronautical information publication the charts, the obstacles, the tables, and we're transforming them into a digital data file. Yeah? And remember that with the picture below, this digital data file will be provided to the user so they can transform this information here into spe specially graphical applications for better um, uh, representing the information contained in this data. And who knows, one of the dreams is that maybe in the future, we're also going to go to the flight management computer, and we're going to also receive the aeronautical information directly in flight management computer, yeah, FMCs. What about NOTAMS, which is another <coughs> you know, product that we have in aeronautical information, right? So we're also going into this digitalization, and the old uh, NOTAMS sent through AFTN messages will also be transformed into a digital file that could later be transformed by the users in a very nice and user-friendly graphical application tools. Yeah, instead of having the NOTAM here indicating that the runway is closed, I actually want to see a picture that shows me that the runway is closed, right? So this is uh, the, the concept too. This is uh, coming in the near future, especially in Europe. I will tell you more um, about the CP1 regulation. But these are not the only <clears throat> conventional products that we are transforming into digital. Also, the PIBs will have an equivalent in the electronic world or in the digital world. So we're transforming these notams or these tens of pages of notams, we're transforming them into something that could be graphically represented 
and uh, even giving you 4D trajectory, et cetera, right? So for the preparation of a flight, of a flight plan. In the end, uh, we're moving that, um, uh, we're moving in from providing a copy of these pre-formatted products, like in paper or like in messages to the, to the users, into a more dynamic uh, service where the data can be accessed everywhere by anyone, right? And uh, so th this is not new for us because uh, um, we are used to work with internet, for instance, and in internet, you just go there and query and, and, and retrieve the data, right? You don't have a pre-formatted format like a, a specific uh, chart or a specific uh, um, section of the AIP. Instead, what we want to do is to connect to, to the service, make a request, and receive a response. And then we would like to uh, transform that information into something that will be helpful for us. And uh, this is also a comparison between conventional AIPs and NOTAMs and what's coming for the future, which is actually web feature services. This is what's coming, yeah? especially those working in aeronautical information. I'm not saying tomorrow in 20 years, well, maybe 20 years, who knows? But the idea is that this is coming <clears throat> and we need to be prepared for this. <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit about the requirements and this CP1. I don't know how many of you are familiar with the CP1 Common Pilot pro Project, yeah, one. So this is important, especially for AIS. It, may, uh, it actually affects only European countries, but it's still uh, important for the whole community in the world <clears throat> because most of these uh, um, guidelines and also um, requirements are actually first uh, developed and tested here in Europe, right? So what Europe is doing is actually um, with uh, using a, a European Commission regulation, in other words, a law, they are demanding that uh, by the end of 2025, we should have very important digitalized services in Europe. And we're talking about aeronautical information data service, airdrome map service, and, and digital NOTAM service. And what, and what you see here, it's actually the same thing I was telling you before, the implementation of feature web services. So CP1, it's actually uh, one of the parts of the CP1 regulation. It's requiring aeronautical data exchange web services already in Europe by 2025. So what's going to happen with this uh, CP1? What they will do is that uh, they will follow the same, but the airdromes operators, for instance, are going to provide uh, airdrome mapping data. And then the AIS uh, uh, departments or units or in all the different ANSPs, they will transform that into a specific service called Airdrome Maps Services. They will also provide some Airdrome events, yeah? And uh, the, the aeronautical information services will digitalize these Airdrome events into digital notams. Yeah? And finally, they will also make use of the already implement a database and make it available so the users can query this database in what we call the aeronautical information feature service. So the users can connect to this and also um, retrieve the information and process this information on their own. So if you see, we're going into this already. We only have a couple of years. We need to be prepared and then we need to, uh, we'll be ready. Some airdromes affected all over Europe, 18 different airports, and these airports by 2025, they, they should be uh, prepared and implementing these concepts, digital note time, airdrome mapping, etc. So this is our proposal for uh, um, in how to implement this, because you might be wondering, okay, um, I, I work for an ANSP. We only work with conventional uh, um, aeronautical information services uh, products, yeah, typical AIP, NOTAM. How should I move there? Of course, this is quite simple, but sometimes we really need to see <clears throat> how this uh, needs to be implemented, right? So let's target our digital products in AIM. So the first thing we need to do, it's actually <clears throat> get to AMD, yeah? What is AMD? The digitalization of our AIM unit. This is very important. I mean, we, we are the ones in the middle and we really need to be prepared for uh, receiving the, the information already digitalized and also for provision for the data users, right? So we need to train our staff, we need to provide an AIM system, and this is actually the first step. Second step, we go to the next point, 
already, which is a digitalization of the originators, because the originators, they also need to be digitalized. For uh, more than a decade, AIS, has, it, it's been uh, prepared. Yeah, because we have this uh, program of the uh, transition from AIS to AIM, led by ICAO. So AIS is already <clears throat> yeah, uh, getting prepared for this, right? But what about the originators? With this uh, new regulation, uh, Regulation 116, and also with the previous uh, regulation, the Regulation 139, airport operators are demanded to provide data already. So they need to be aware of this compliance and they need to uh, create uh, these interfaces and follow the uh, data chain or the workflow. And finally, something that we sometimes totally forget about, which is creative and awareness, because we're changing here completely the way of uh, aeronautical information provision and um, we, we usually forget to train our staff and uh, to make the users aware that new things are coming, that they all should, should be prepared, and also same thing for the providers. Yeah, because they need to provide us this data digitalized so we can process, approve this information, and later send this information to the users. So we have a fully data chain um, in the whole process. In Group PED, uh, we've been uh, working for more than 20 years uh, with aeronautical data in the European AIS database. So uh, we believe that we can help the community and uh, we can help you because uh, we have an exclusive AIM training academy where we provide different types of, uh, of, um, of uh, uh, um, let's say, modalities for training. We do virtual, we do classroom, we also do a lot of seminars. And one of, uh, some of the most successful trainings that we have are actually related with uh, the evolution from AIS to AIM, AIXM, digital notam and digital data sets, yeah? and also the uh, regulatory framework of Europe. But most importantly, right now, we are developing a, a special ex and exclusive uh, specialist programs where we are actually addressing all the different uh, uh, requirements that we have by ICAO, by the European uh, Union, and also the technology challenges that we have uh, in terms of uh, the digitalization. I'm talking about uh, databases implementation, data management, et cetera, in two specific training courses or programs, uh, which are the dynamic data specialist and also digital AIM uh, uh, product specialist. So we also provide consultancy services. Yeah, we have been working already with uh, some customers in, in Europe where we actually, uh, first of all, analyze the, the different regulatory requirements that they have, and then we come with a gap analysis, and we also help them to, um, to define what are the different measures in order to, to fill in all these gaps, right? We can also accompany them with a more advanced toolkit, yeah, and we can uh, uh, go with them also with the implementation process. So you might be wondering why Group ED? Yeah, as I mentioned before, we've been 20 years in the service provision, We've been actually the, the pioneers in the data management and we're one of the initiators of the transition from AIS to AIM because we're running this database that was actually the initiator of everything, right? So we work 24 seven hours since uh, 2003. An important thing is that we have more than 15 different nationalities and this allows us to speak different languages, right? But more importantly in the end is that uh, we actually leave AIM. We've been the initiators, and we're proud to say that we are pioneers in this, in this side. In the end, we all know that um, a picture is worth a thousand words, yeah? So we are so used to have all this information, uh, aeronautical information in paper and in AFTN messages like the NOTAMs, <clears throat> but we all know that there is no other way than going into digital and, and uh, digital world where we can uh, obtain this data and later transform this data into graphical representation. Yeah? So all the information contained in AIPs, NOTAMs, et cetera, we really need to visualize this. We really need to, hit, we really need to see uh, and, 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 and make these things understandable for the users because we are, not, we are simply not able to read 20 plus pages of NOTAMs per hour of flight.